Nobody called Isaac Newton a scientist, at least not to his face. Galileo had never heard the word. It wasn't until the early 18th century that the word science came to be used in the modern sense. The word scientist wasn't coined until even later, in the 19th century. Before then, people who wanted to understand how the universe worked called themselves philosophers. Like artists, scientists and philosophers were once supported by generous patrons, or were from wealthy families. Today, science has become a profession. And scientists can be found in a variety of places, including universities, research institutions, or companies, where they work to develop new technologies, models, discoveries, or applications. Of course, fascination with the universe doesn't stop with the professionals. Enter citizen science. It's for projects that can draw on collaborations with a much wider group of volunteers, and is increasingly becoming an important part of research. Access to cheaper technology and everyday, everywhere tools like sensors and smartphones means we can capture data and contribute photos on how our local habitats are adapting to inform climate change models. Access to better processing and data sharing means we can use the network that is the internet to analyse large amounts of information. For example, how proteins can best be folded to help shape treatments for diseases like AIDS. Our human capacity for puzzles and pattern recognition still outstrips computers. And these innate skills are being used to collaboratively explore and categorise vast repositories of photos, finding patterns in them. These might help us better understand the lunar surface, explosions on the sun, or the formation of stars and galaxies. Easy sharing of knowledge and data brings together, sometimes very niche, communities of interest from all over the world to do science together. Communities can also form, not around doing science, but around having their say in how decisions about science are made, particularly in more controversial areas like GM foods, stem cells and nanotechnology. This has led to increased acceptance of the idea that citizens need to be part of a conversation about what science is done and how it is applied. This is not citizen science, but civic science, an increasingly necessary dialogue involving non-scientists, research scientists, public servants and politicians in decision-making about the direction of science policies. After all, science and technology shape society in many and varied ways. Some of these ways are unexpected and sometimes unwelcome, and some benefit some people more than others, but staying involved helps shape our collective future.